It's Memorial Day weekend once again, which means it's time to head back to one of the best circuits on our schedule, a crown jewel event, the Coca-Cola 600. Let's preview the race at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. Who do you think is going to win the Coca-Cola 600? Plus, give me any improvements I can make on the channel. Memorial Day weekend, it's a good weekend to celebrate our veterans. Plus, it's the biggest weekend in motorsports with the longest race of the Cup Series season being the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And this race has put on a show the last few years. Ever since entering the next-gen era, Charlotte Motor Speedway has put on some of the most exciting races so far. Denny Hamlin was able to win in 2022, and then last year Ryan Blaney was able to get the victory in the Coca-Cola 600. These next-gen cars just put on some phenomenal racing at the mile and a half. Charlotte, Kansas, I'd say Homestead's a pretty good track for it as well. These tracks tend to put on some phenomenal racing. And I'm expecting another great race on Sunday in the Coca-Cola 600. 400 laps around Charlotte Motor Speedway. 600 miles, the longest race in the Cup Series season. Formerly known as the World 600, it is considered to be one of NASCAR's crown jewel events going with the Daytona 500. Some would say the Brickyard 400, and some would even go as far to say Bristol. And of course, you have the Southern 500 at Darlington Raceway. One thing that tends to plague this event is rain. Rain sometimes gets in the way of this event, as it seems to be a factor for every NASCAR event. But so far, I've peeked at the forecast. It doesn't look like we're going to get any rain in Charlotte, but there is a good chance we could get some rain in Indianapolis for the Indianapolis 500, which could affect the double duty efforts from Kyle Larson attempting to do the Sunday double, 1,100 miles. I'll get into more of that in my Indianapolis 500 preview video, which I hope to have out a little bit later today. So it doesn't look like we're going to get any rain Sunday night, 600 miles. What are some things to expect from the Coca-Cola 600? With how long the event is and with having four equal stages, usually that's not the case. Usually the first two stages are a little bit less and the last stage seems to be the longest amount. But for the Coca-Cola 600, it's four stages instead of three. This is the only race with four stages and each stage is 100 laps each. And strategy is something we've always seen in the Coca-Cola 600 even with the four stages. So I expect strategy to play a huge factor whether that comes to taking two or four tires Fuel strategy tends to be a big thing in the Coca-Cola 600, so definitely watch out for that as well. One thing I always find very entertaining about the Coca-Cola 600, because it's such a long race, they start the race in the daytime, and then it slowly transitions into the night. So there's a good chance on Sunday, the fastest car in the field that's going to end up winning the race might not even be up battling for the lead in the early goings. With this being a full transition into the night, it really changes things for these drivers and these race cars. Some cars are set up better for the daytime, while some are set up better for the nighttime. But with the Coca-Cola 600 being so long, it goes a lot further into the night where the track temperature really changes and everything changes with the vehicle. So we're going to be watching all night to see what cars get faster and which cars get slower. One thing I also really expect is some really hard aggressive racing. Like I mentioned, we've had some pretty good races here the last couple of years, but we've also had some really gnarly accidents in the Coca-Cola 600. With this next-gen era of car, it's overall changed the driving styles in the garage. A lot of drivers are driving way more aggressive than they ever have because they have to. And then a track like Charlotte, which is so racy, we're going to see a lot of aggression, not just because it is a racy track, but because it is a crown jewel event. 
Everybody in the field wants to win the Coca-Cola 600, especially the drivers that have never won there before. This race is a big physical toll with how long it is, but it's also a big mental toll. <laughs> Stop crying. It won't do any good. And anyway, you have a lot of work to do starting right now. And then the last thing before I really get into the favorites that I think we'll have on Sunday in the Coca-Cola 600, with that extra stage, there's something really to watch out for, and that is stage points. Some drivers and some race teams are really going to be going hard for stage points and are going to be pulling a bunch of different strategies because you could potentially get 30 stage points. Now to get to the favorites. Hmm. I think there's a lot of good competitors in the field. A lot of drivers are very talented at Charlotte, and especially with Ford improving. Ford have won two races in a row with Brad Keselowski winning at Darlington and then Joey Logano just completely spanking the field in the all-star race. It looks like Ford could potentially have their mojo back. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but they look like they have a lot more speed if you also include that almost win at Kansas with Chris Buescher. With that in mind, I would name Ryan Blaney as one of the favorites. Ryan Blaney always seems to be really quick at these sort of racetracks. He did win the Coca-Cola 600 last season. Is Blaney able to keep up that Penske magic? This should come as no surprise, but keep an eye out for all four Hendrick cars and all four Joe Gibbs racing cars. I think this goes without saying so far this season because these two teams have been just leaps and bounds better than everybody else almost every single race. Of course, you have a couple of drivers here and there that are able to compete, but these two race teams have been just so consistent and competitive all year long, especially if we're talking about Kyle Larson and Denny Hamlin. A couple other drivers I would like to throw in there. I would like to throw in Tyler Reddick. Tyler Reddick has been pretty strong on the mile and a half this season, has looked good. I can expect him to have a really good run this weekend in the Coca-Cola 600. And Ross Chastain. I would put Ross Chastain as a big competitor for the win as well. He overall hasn't had that great of a season, but he's also looked really strong on the mile and a half. So I remember he led a bunch of laps at Kansas. He's looked pretty good this season at mile and a half. Maybe not everything else, but I would expect the Melon Man to compete for the victory or at least a top five on Sunday. And then one more driver I would actually put in there is Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch has been very inconsistent this season. He's my favorite driver, and I haven't had the confidence as putting him as one of the favorites pretty much all year. I think at Talladega was the only time I really put him as a favorite this season. It's been a very tough year for the number eight team. But Kyle Busch has found success at Charlotte Motor Speedway before. Also, RCR has had a lot of success at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And I know out of all races, this is one of the biggest races that RCR would want to win. It's a crown jewel event in Memorial Day weekend. And coming off everything that happened last week with Ricky Stenhouse Jr., I saw a different Kyle Busch last week that I haven't seen in a very long time. And hopefully that unleashes something from old. And I could, I could see him competing for the win on Sunday in the Coca-Cola 600 in that number eight Chevy. My pick to win the race. This is kind of tough, but this is a 600-mile race. Who's a really good driver that knows how to take care of their stuff and just knows how to consistently run pretty much every lap, stay under the radar, and just run a good, consistent race? There's nobody better than Martin Truex Jr. I was really debating between him, Hamlin, and Larson. I think Larson and Hamlin could have a really good race, but Larson's also coming fresh off the Indy 500, and who knows what happens that day. He might not even race the Indy 500. It's going to be a very interesting day for Kyle Larson. And very surprisingly, Martin Strix Jr. has yet to win a race this season. He's been very strong all year. I think he's second in points at the moment. Has had a great year, but has yet to make it to victory lane, and I think he gets there this weekend in the Coca-Cola 600. Driving that beautiful number 19 Bass Pro Shops Memorial Day special scheme. That is a beautiful scheme. I'm going to pull it up right here. This is a really nice scheme. I don't like to show paint schemes too often. But this paint scheme is going to look really beautiful covered in confetti in Victory Lane. And an underdog pick. I found this to be 
somewhat difficult. I got to pick my underdog as one of the other Bass Pro Shops drivers. He was voted in to the All-Star Race last week, and that's Noah Gregson. With Ford picking up the pace, they've been looking a little stronger the last couple of weeks. And in my opinion, throughout most of the season, other than, of course, Ryan Blaney's consistency, the best driver for Ford has been Noah Gregson. Especially if this becomes a strategy race, whether it's fuel strategy or taking some sort of tire strategy, because I know that Stuart Haas Racing wants to have at least one of their teams in the playoffs, especially with the recent news with the possible sale of all four charters. Gregson has been the standout over there, in my opinion. I think some would argue Chase Briscoe as well. That's fair. But Noah Gregson has had a phenomenal comeback story, and I think that would be a very fitting part of that comeback story winning the coca-cola 600 but let me know your thoughts down below what do you think of the coca-cola 600 who do you think is going to win the race a hendrick driver joe gibbs driver somebody that's not part of those two race teams because it seems like they're scooping up most of the victories even though ford is making a comeback we'll have to keep a close eye on those ford race teams But that will do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying peace.